Every esport has that one flashy role whose residents are rock stars. Mechanical maestros whose sole responsibility is to ship out savory beatdowns. Oh, Asuna! He gets the triple off the rocket! It's the fourth kill! He's working oh on the ace! Asuna, absolutely monstrous performance there on short A. In MOBAs like League and Dota, you have the mid laners. In Siege, it's the utterly braindead Ash and Jaeger mains. Hell, even Overwatch boasts a handful of heroes whose specialists actually have to, you know, aim. And the bait is there, Prophet gets the headshot, gets rid of the Tracer, and the Shocker only worked with five players. That's gonna be hard for Moth to resurrect as well. I think they just wait for him to return and... Oh, oh Prophet, oh, are you kidding me? And Lord knows, in Counter-Strike, it's the Oppers. Why didn't you cast the round? Okay, tags up. One. He's gonna get. Oh! oh! I'm starting to believe as well, Henry, because he's gonna take and flame. Oh! oh, fallen! Stop blowing my mind! From the flicks to the filthy no-nos, there is no denying that those who've been entrusted with the mighty green are the showstoppers of CS. Living, breathing highlight reels who will stop at nothing to churn out the most ludicrous clips imaginable. Try and hold off the rotations. Oscar's gone. Chris is an op still in the picture. Op still very much in the round. Oh, oh Chris, he's found three. It's down to a two no on way. two. Chris, can he close this with an ace? Oh my God. Chris, the Wolf of Wall Street gets an ace. Well, I mean, all of them save one. Stay a steady game timer. I lose it. I can't hold. Ska bara ställa larm här på klockan. Ja. <laughs> Today we're here to pay our begrudging respects to Jamie Jame Ali, the enigmatic opper who's managed to cement himself as world class not by taking fights, but by avoiding them time and time again. And I think we know what time it is. AK-47 in hand, and he's nowhere to be seen in the action. No. So the save streak begins, and Jim, last man standing, AWP in hand. You know, he'd love to save the weapon. <laughs> he'd love to. He loves a good save. You see, despite being a more than capable fragger, James' go-to instinct is never to lunge into battle. It's to play with such passivity that at the first sign of failure, he opts to retreat instead of retake, to save instead of slam, to instigate what the community calls... <laughs> and because of his passive playstyle, Jame has unwittingly cemented himself as not only the most memed on opera in existence, but maybe the most maligned. We have no other option but to save. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. Jame, I think he might be out of time already. He's hunting him and Holzerg is toying with him. He's gonna get the kill, but not the round. <laughs> Can he live here? There's no way. Ooh, no. he does. Just what, 15 damage. What an absolute troll. <laughs> So how is it that Jane became the most anticlimactic opera alive? In what sense has his roster built this boring yet extremely effective playstyle around him? And why has it turned them into one of the best teams in the world? Jame, 1v2, and no Jame time left in the tank. He's gonna win this, there's the first. Oh, oh Jame. Jame with the double, and it keeps on going for VP. Now, before you nab the AWP, yell see ya nerds, and bunny hop your way off site, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. That way I'll have even more money to buy even more ops. And more importantly, op skins. Gungnirs don't grow on trees, you know. All right, so who is Jame, and how did he become the messiah-like opper, in-game leader, and face of the all-too-vitrialized Virtus Pro? Well, like a lot of crispy Counter-Strikers, our boy hails from the motherland that is the CIS, 
where he signed to his first real roster, Avangar, in 2017. Тут же и тут же погибает сам минус по Чопер Джейм. Отлично. Сегодня дабл килл, снайперская винтовка, но Кеша в спине. Кеша может пойти дальше. Джейм! И сейчас четвертый. Смотри, смотри. Там квадрокилл от Джейма. By 2018, Avangar were fragging their way into some very hefty international events, such as the Boston Major. And Jame was quickly cementing himself as not only one of his region's breakout stars, but one of his game's slowest, steadiest, and most surgical offers. Again, the support may be good, but he's left on his own for now. One kill comes in, Cody quick with the trade, and Avangard pulling it back man for man as they continue the fight. Davkos can try and stop the bomb down, and now with 15 seconds left, all it takes is one kill. Although this time it goes in the favor of Jame. Trade from Sopvik on the flank. And it's all down to whether he plants. Seven seconds left. Goes for the safe option. I like it. But that'll just allow Sotvik to push up aggressively. Switches up to the box as he moves on in. But spotted on the jump and Jame hits the shot. 12 rounds for Avangar. And by all accounts, that's exactly what an opera should be. Reserved and, for the most part, risk averse. It just so happens that Jame boasted one quirk that took that to a whole other level. You see, Jame loved his op. Like, a lot. So much so that he always saved it. Always. The one issue that they will have, though, is Jame, because he's bought an op, Glass Cannon. Another one of those strange Avangar buys where it just doesn't make sense. He might as well do it now, though, because it doesn't seem like Avangar too intent on, on a, going for a retake. And Hemp is definitely going to be surprised by that look. <laughs> it's like, why have they got an op? Yeah. <laughs> At least remain honest, but yeah, hey, Avangar immediately deciding to save. They've uh, backed the hell out. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that a good thing? As anyone who's ever reluctantly dropped an op will tell you, if you blow nearly five grand on this digital deletion tool and then watch as some idiot runs off and dies with it in the first eight seconds, it's actually really bad. Because the op isn't just the most impactful boomstick on the board. It's the most expensive. Well, of the guns that people actually use, that is. It's not like Liquid or holding tryouts for a primary auto sniper -er. Though, at this point, maybe they should be? Oh God. Sad times, man. Anyway, the point is that you want your opera to be flashy but you also want them to be responsible and reliable, since weapons carry over, i.e. can be saved round to round. What's interesting is that, for whatever reason, most of CSGO's truly famous oppers are, well, kind of anything but that. And has to immediately fall back with Jade. What? He wants this madness. He's picking what? up behind the lines. He's gonna get the kill on Sipnix and runs away, and that has to shake TSM. To be clear, that is not to say that they are bad. No, 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 no. They are animals. Big dicked divinities who routinely pull off idiotic, irresponsible frags without a second thought. Frags that you just know were prefaced with someone on comms saying, don't worry, he wins these. But Kenny S stuck in the site finding more. That's brilliant, and Kenny S again up close. Oh my goodness, Kenny S, the no scope on the third. There are exceptions, of course, but they're just surprisingly hard to find. In fact, if you can find a world-class opera whose excellence isn't predicated on being a showboat, one who actually excels at being ultra-defensive, Snatch them up, because they will take you to the stars. Device who's had a really rough game, flashed, he's gonna get that shot, and that has to feel a little bit going out middle of the air to take down Alex, and now they're pushing, oh! oh no! gonna be kidding me! He takes every single one! But Jame is a little different. He took his propensity for saving to such an extreme that at some point, it looked as if his team could actually be paralyzed by it. Passive position is true to the low HP. At this point, Jim is just looking for an avenue of safety. Both players are on the bottom side here for big. One will tap and that should be at least a, a player into the open. Jim has not peaked it, so just got to defuse it. And there we go. Oh, the, uh, Easy as it comes. Jim just looks to his teammate like, what the hell just wait, happened? Wait, was, was I meant to? 45 seconds. Jim is just sitting here. It's just waiting for a player to eventually come through Palace, but the bomb is starting to 
make its way forward in towards the A bomb site. Eventually, it is getting planted in its existence. It'll be the man to sort of risk his own life to get yeah, the bomb planted. That's a super ballsy plant. Now they get an open plant that's really easy to defend from both pit and mid. Yeah, this, this is going to exactly be difficult for yeah. the CT side because there's so many post plant positions established here. Screen's picked up a kill as well, so it's back into a 4v4. Not doing damage. Screen coming in with another, and it's falling apart for a Vanguard. It's only on Jim. And it's a 1v3, it's it's just oh, too far gone already, so Jim again, save time for the AWP. Needless to say, this ultra-disciplined approach has received its fair share of criticism. I know a lot of people are excited to see Jim because obviously he's very skilled with the op. I can't get excited watching him play. And yes, a shitload of memeing. James, stop baiting. I'm coming for you. So I think Jamie is the second coming of Jesus and he will save my pickums. Sorry, chat. All right, Kenny, as a CT, what do you do when you've eliminated all the T's but the bomb is planted? I saved the L. It's gem time. Some even went so far as to dub him the Jesus of CSGO, since, well, he's got a beard, long hair, and, uh, saves. Get it? Here's the thing, though. Tiresome as it was from a spectator standpoint, James' painstakingly self-restrained playstyle was actually really hard to deal with. If James can find him with his head turned away, then that's one thing. If Flamey resides in the side of the ladder, then that's another. James is honing in on this. James is walking forward, and now he's on for the one versus three clutch. Avangar again with a chance, but how? How does he get himself away from this? He's gonna climb the ladder, you'd think. Electronic may have just been fooled by this. He takes the high road, and James not yet spotted, but he's just working his way around. He's got the info! He's got the shot! James 1v3! Saving the AWP every round essentially meant that Avangar had an AWP every round, making it way easier to secure opening picks and ensure that their opponents always had to play around the damn thing. But when James did decide to go in, he popped the off. And will they look for this? James goes for a white peak with a pistol. That's beautiful. Giving James a chance. One versus one. He knows exactly where Stewie is. Around the pillar. Oh, oh James connects it. Can you believe it? It's kind of a disaster. Yeah, they're not going to let him go. They're going to step right in front of that Molotov. James still wants to fight. There's the jump back. Huge shot. Bomb hits the deck. And Vitality is gonna have to scramble to recover it. And Jame coming back now has a chance on an Apex, and he's got that as well. Four kills in the round for Jame. And disaster strikes Vitality. He's so hungry, he's gonna eat the entire team. Ace to take down Vitality. Is it Jame time? It's Jame time, boys. <laughs> By the fall of 2019, Avangar had Cinderella'd their way to the finals of the Berlin Major, where they faced off against Astralis, the greatest team ever to do it. The bout lasted, well, a solid 10 minutes. It was a beatdown, but that was okay. No one could beat Astralis back then. James is all alone, and he doesn't know where to look, doesn't know what to pay attention, a miss shot, and he's gone, and Astralis delivering the final uppercut. But contrary to what a lot of people thought, that was not the last that we would see of Avangar, Jame, or his pesky penchant for pocketing ops. We've been asking teams all day as well to give our um, our grenade challenge a go. They're behind you, you can see the little ho the holes in the wall there. Okay. Um, there's some little bean bags. We're giving everyone three three shots at trying to get the highest score. Okay. I, 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 I think James gonna hit all three. You think James gonna yeah. hit all, th all yeah, three? Yeah, he'll save all three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the very end of 2019, they'd caught the attention of a Virtus Pro, who quickly signed them on. But the advent of the game's so-called online era didn't exactly treat them kindly. If he gets this one-on-one, -on -one, this round, it could be his. But no scope, he's just gambling. He's just throwing his money in the lottery and he's doing it twice. I, I, I've, I've lost words, I've lost oh logic. My God. VP have probably lost this map. For the better part of 2020, Virtus Pro struggled to regain the form that had catapulted them to a major final. And Jame admitted to HLTV that his save-obsessed approach might have contributed to that. But after bringing in Yakindar, things began to turn around for VP. And by the end of the year, they were once again looking fearsome. 
It seems like we might have a bit of aggression coming through, ya yeah, kinder. Oh my god. Newest addition to the team showing up in style for the pistol round. That's a triple. Make that a quad. All headshots, ya yeah, kinder. Calm down, boy. Can he get the ace as well? Just do it. There you have it. In addition to supplementing James' glacially paced opping with Yakindar's hyper aggressive entry style, they'd racked up wins at Flashpoint 2, Dreamhack Open December, and CS Summit 7, where Jame himself was named MVP. It's hard to figure out where the bomb's being planted by sound when it's on the other side of the smoke and the fountain. But here is the cavalry for Fnatic at the very least. Jame alone, one versus three. We know he's capable, needs to find the right timing though. It's a nice angle from Crims, but a better flick from Jane. Repositioning now, trying to isolate fights and avoid the trade fragger. He's got down from one, a flick from JW, from Jane, and it's 1v1 now. Brolin has a kit, does he commit to the defuse here? He's got a smoke as well, it's gonna be huge, but he beats oh. first. And there is the clutch from Jane. One versus three, never count him out. By 2021, it was clear. Our boy was making genuine strides when it came to holding down the W key. What's more, he'd become way less inclined to shy away from a fight. Look how close they are. Yeah, he's gonna get one here. Can't believe his luck. Anticipating a second. Trying to- Oh, we get away! Oh, has he? No, no way! James! James gets the no scope, he gets a third! He's oh! ending it right here, right now! Jane pops off! Best of all, he'd found ways to save a little less selfishly. And, and, you know, VP have a little more money thanks to Jame just there. I don't know if you caught it. Jame realized he was trapped by the scout at back boxes. And so he dropped his orb and he shot it over to Buster on ramp so he could pick it up and get out of the round. Jame didn't feel like he would be able to escape without getting taken down. Still, it wasn't as if Virtus Pro's problems were going to disappear overnight. Old habits die hard, as they say, and Jame time was no exception. Big up close, good kill initially. No luck from Buster. The bomb is still at spot yeah. mid, folks. It's on Jame. Come on, Jame, you gotta bring it to the site. Your team are already here taking fights. Come on, you gotta get the bomb over here. 20 seconds left. Yukindar's gonna have to try and get a kill, but what is, what's happening right now? Yukindar's gonna do everything, and it's, Jame's just not going for it. Going into IEM Cologne 2021, CSGO's first LAN in well over a year, fans were, quite frankly, uninterested in Virtus Pro. Thanks in large part to Jame, his roster had patented this frugal, disciplined anti-CS that made their matches long, boring to watch, and as Sponge said on HLTV Confirmed, difficult to hype up. We had some calls, like as soon as the event ends, we do like some some production meeting calls and some some content discussions and stuff. And we're in the phone call and we're talking about like the promo content that we want to do, right? For this week and the stuff that's being worked on now within these four days. And VP is a topic, it comes up and nobody wants to talk about VP. Like I'm one of the people who's like, like I'm on the call, they're like, okay, so what's cool about VP? And I'm like, I don't know, nothing's cool. <laughs> like we've already done the Yakinda thing to death, right? We've done the Yakinda thing to yeah. death. Virtus Pro weren't so much playing to win as they were playing not to lose. And at a time when the community was already discussing whether official matches were too long, the fact that they were winning was tilting to a sizable number of CSGO fans. The question was whether Jame and his compatriots actually gave a shit. Winning is great, don't get me wrong, but is it really worth being hated over? Say what you will about Virtus Pro's playstyle, it secured them a top six finish at what was undeniably the most important Counter-Strike tournament in like forever. While their stingy sniper may be a bit of a bore, Christ is he hard to beat. And Virtus Pro are one round away from being eliminated from IEM Cologne without a single map win. Challenge into Jamie, has got one in the AWP, another one for Jamie. He's gonna try and take everybody down. And Jim lit into the night, he's still froggy like a madman. He goes boosted up, but Yukindar's ready, another headshot for him. And Config is desperately scrambling, trying to find his kill, but Buster will close it. Blimf is alone, flashed into the sight, and they are eliminated from Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Complexity exit early, and Virtus Pro stay alive.
We'll be back after the break to break this one down. Thanks to their remarkable showing at Cologne, VP have proven that they are a world-class roster with a world-class opera at the helm. And as CSGO slowly but surely returns to regular LAN competition, the question is whether Virtus Pro will ever have what it takes to be the best by toppling their opposition one save at a time. Securing this one, it's only Kickert and Jame, and only Kickert with the first. Now a second, perhaps they can finish it right here, right now. Up against the odds, Jame to finish the job as only Sphinx missing his shot. Oh, oh no way! That is a disaster! Though, at this point, maybe they should be? I'm just, I'm just kidding, I love you guys. I'm, j I'm swear to God, I'm, I love you guys, I'm just kidding. You don't have to use these, I'm just like, just in case you feel, because I feel so bad and I love Liquid so much and I don't want them to fucking hate me. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to actually, they're our only team, bro. They're NACS's only tier one team. Like we, like, it is, I, I hope, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick, but something's gotta change, man. They gotta, it's not working. Like, 